Let's try it out. It's working! What's up champions, welcome back to Jet Surf Nation, your place where we test and review all available jet boards and e-foil. And in this video we are gonna unbox and test the new system called Foil Drive. Let's go! You know guys, e-foils are super fun to ride, but the problem is they are very heavy, which essentially limits your ability to pump and glide on the waves. That's why after a few seasons of riding, you would definitely want to upgrade to something lighter. The problem is a big gap in skills between e-foiling and real foiling sports. Let's imagine you are more or less good at e-foiling, so your skill is right here. If you want to upgrade to real foiling sports such as wing foiling, prone foiling, wake foiling, downwinding and kite foiling, the skill difference is very very big. It's very hard to get from e-foiling to the real foiling sports. And to help you bridge this gap, we have a system called Foil Drive. You know I've been following Foil Drive for a while now, but the original assist system was developed for subfoiling. But as you know, I'm not a subfoiler, so I didn't have much interest in their system. But the new Assist Plus system, which we have right here, is much stronger, much faster, and with the right setup, you can even go e-foiling. Well, for a very short time, but you can do it. So. Without further ado, let's unbox it and see what comes in the original box and then I'm gonna show you what extra accessories you might need to get to improve your experience with spoil drive. Later in this video I'm going to show you how you can assemble everything with different sets of foil boards for beginners, for intermediate, for professionals, with different mass, different wing types. We are gonna compare them and see which one works best for you. All right? Are you ready? Let's get started! First, when we open our box, we have this little pot which goes on your mask. Fall Drive supports different types of masks, so when you order the product, you should select it from the drop-down menu. Some masks, like this Axis mask, Carbon mask, has variable width. It's more wide near the board and here it's more narrow. That's why it's very important you get the right pot for the right mask. Then we have two little cable guides, I'll show you later how you use them. Alright, inside the box we get this lipo bag. You know lithium ion batteries are very dangerous, so you should definitely charge them in this safe lipo bag. Next we got screwdriver from foil drive, so you have everything here to get started. Next we get this foil drive Maytag remote and this strap to help you not to lose it in the water. As I mentioned before, you can use foil drive for sub-foiling. So they provide you with this left and right attachment of the remote control for your paddle. Here we got the charger. This one came with Australian plug, so you might need to have an adapter. Here we got some rubber straps, plus I recommend to get additional flexible straps from Amazon to help you attach foil drive to your board. Here we got few more cable guides for your mask. This is a wireless charger for your remote control. And here is the best part, the actual foil drive system, which consists of two parts. The magic box, which includes the battery, the speed controller, and the motor, which goes on the mask. The cable length is very important parameter. You can order the short cable and the long cable. The longer the cable, the more room you have to choose the position of the motor on your mask. So for example, if you go e-foiling, you need to put your foil drive on the bottom of the mask near the wings. So you need longer cable. So I would definitely recommend to order the longest cable possible, for example, two meters. And this is how the CIS Plus motor looks. The original one comes with this plastic 3D printed propellers, but you can upgrade and order the proper metal propellers for better performance. And this is our magic box, which contains the speed controller and the foil drive battery. This is the lithium ion battery, 28 volts, 12.6 ampere hours. They provide you with a choice of three different batteries, depending how much power you need and how light the battery will be. Obviously, the heavier the battery, the more riding time you'll get but the difference is significant. This standard battery with a whole setup with everything included is around 3.5 kilograms. I know this looks a little bit do-it-yourself style, so be very careful operating and dealing with the batteries and with this little box. Make sure you never put any salty water inside, keep it dry and always clean this rubber seal. Make sure nothing gets in, especially salty water. And always after each use in the salty water, Make sure to rinse your propeller and the mast and the motor to make sure the salt doesn't accumulate. 
There you have it, that's all we got in the standard box and later in this video I'll show you some extra accessories that you might need to get if you want to improve your ride. Now all we need to do is to assemble everything and I'll be honest it takes some time but you only need to do it once, you don't have to assemble it each time you go to the water. Just install it, attach it to your board and then you're ready to go. Behind me you can see several boards and several wings. Now let me show you different options in terms of masts, wings and board sizes in relation to foil drive to help you understand what kind of setup is easier for you to get started and get the optimal performance with foil drive. It all depends on your weight and your skill level. So if you're somebody like me, 85 kilograms, almost zero foiling experience, you might want something simpler, easier setup, closer to e-foiling. And if you are lightweight, 65 to 75 kilograms, super professional with 25 years of kite foiling experience, obviously you're going for professional setup, negative volume board and smallest wings possible for faster speed and carving. Let's start with the mast. I'm going to test it on two masts. First one is called F1. This is the constant width mast. Very easy aluminum mast. It's quite heavy but very strong. This mast you can use for e-foiling because it's really strong. Let's imagine this table is a board. So you can position your foil drive somewhere right here if you want to go on the waves around 26 to 30 centimeters below the board. Or if you want to go e-foiling, you can position it right here, just like a foil closer to the wing. And if you're already more professional, you can get an axis mast, 86 centimeters, carbon fiber, really good mast right here. Now, the wings. The most important thing about foiling is to understand you are not riding the board, you are surfing the wing. So the wing is the most important part of your foiling experience. And getting the right wing for right surfing conditions is crucial to get awesome experience. If you want to just get started, the closest to e-foiling experience, the easiest, I would definitely suggest to get the biggest low aspect ratio wing, something like this here. It's an F1 wing with total area of 1800. It's very big wing, very easy to ride and gives you a lot of lift. The next step would be to upgrade to the mid-range wing, something like this. PNG 1010 pump and glide wing from Axis. This is a high aspect ratio wing. It's easy to ride, easy to pump and easy to learn. And finally, if you're a real pro, if you're really good at gliding, pumping, you should definitely try the legendary Axis Art 1099 wing. This is the high aspect ratio wing. You can see how narrow it is. It's very wide, it's very narrow. It should give you a lot of gliding ability, but since it's a high aspect ratio wing, it's harder to get started. So you should be already pro with your foil drive before trying this wing. And now let's compare different boards that you can try. If you have no experience with foiling sports like me and only e-foiled before, you should definitely try with biggest volume inflatable board. Something like here, I have Rocket Air 5.1 125 liters inflatable foil board. This should give me a lot of volume when getting started and you can use this board even if you want to go e-foiling with foil drive. But remember, just like I said, you are not surfing the board, you are surfing the wing. So the bigger the board is, it's easier to start but much harder to ride. Because it gives you a lot of extra unnecessary size and volume, it increases your swing weight, it's harder to carve. So the smaller board, the easier to ride, but harder to start. The next mid-range board would be something from 40 to 60 liters, something like here. I have Rocket 4.1 board with 48 liters. This should be much harder to start compared to inflatable one, but much more fun to ride and carve when you're already gliding. Finally, if you're already a professional or you're a very lightweight person, 65 to 75 kilograms, you can even try foil drive with the negative volume board, something like here. It's 4.6, 33 liters professional board, which you can use even with foot straps. And obviously, I always recommend, make sure you use the leash when you go motorized in the surf. I think the smallest board like this, combined with a fun wing R1099, will provide you with an ultimate foiling experience. Our mid-range board will probably work best with the pump and glide 1010 wing. And the fat inflatable board will probably work best with the biggest low aspect ratio 800 wing. This setup should be so easy to ride for everyone 
you can even e-foil on it if you want to. Alright, let's do a quick installation. First we need to decide where we're gonna put our propeller. Like I said before, there could be different positions. The ideal for us would be around 26-28 cm below the board, somewhere right here. Let's double check to make sure we have enough cable length. Now choose the correct port for your mast and attach it using the little screws that we provided. Make sure you're very gentle when you're screwing it, don't apply too much pressure. This is a 3D plated plastic, so you don't want to over tight it. Now we put our engine here and screw it again. There you have it, the propeller is properly installed right now. As you can see, it stays really tight. If you feel it's wiggling around on the mast, make sure to apply a rubber electrical tape around the mast to make sure it fits tight and strong. The next step would be to install the cable guides. We can place two over here on the mast and then apply the rubber tape to secure it. This is a very important step. I know this looks totally ugly and do-it-yourself kind of stuff, but the better you apply the tape, the less drag you're gonna have when riding. If you have a rigid board, you can apply a couple of cable guides over here as well, but in my case it's inflatable, so I'm not gonna do it. The final step would be to secure our main box somewhere here on the board. And this is very important, the position of this box really matters a lot. Remember, the antenna is right here, so this box cannot be underwater. That's why it's very important to make sure your box always stays in the dry position. In case of the big volume board, it can be on the back, because it has so much flotation, it's not going to be a problem but if you're having a smaller board you cannot really put it right here there is no space even here so some people install this box and sometimes in the north over here so imagine if your front leg is over here in this position so the box will be on the other side somewhere here that's why it's very important to get a very long cable because it's probably going to go all the way back here now let's just secure it with the straps and now everything is ready battery is on Remote is on, let's try it out. It's working! Let's go to the water. In this first experiment we are gonna try e-foiling with a foil drive to see if this tiny battery in the motor has enough power to lift a heavy rider like me, 85 kilograms, into the sky. As you can see I'm using my biggest 125 liter inflatable board and I move down propeller closer to the wings to get the maximum leverage. The whole setup including the board, the battery, the engine, the mast and the wings is just 14.5 kilograms making it the lightest e-foil on the market. However I need to be very clear that foil drive is not intended for e-foiling and it's not advertised as such. So this is just a fun experiment. With that being said let's go e-foiling! Alright let's see how it goes. First of all, I need to say, this thing is so lightweight, it's unbelievable. You know, I tried all the falls on the market, but this is so light, I can even carry it on one hand. As you can see, the board has so much volume that I have no trouble at all standing up and getting on the foil really quick. However, when the battery is depleting under 40%, I need an extra push from the wave to lift me up. Here we go, we're already foiling. The 1800 wing is so big that you can foil almost with no speed. The downside, it's harder to turn. So, can you foil? Definitely. But the question is, how long can you go like this? If you are under 75 kilograms and you are good enough that you are not going to fall all the time, going straight on a clean day with a big wing, you can reach up to 20 minutes of riding time. And before you start laughing, I know with real equal you can get over one and one and a half hours of riding time. But take a look guys, this battery is tiny compared to the battery of a real equal, so this is not a fair comparison. That's why foil drive guys are clearly saying this product is not intended for e-foiling purposes. Can you ride the waves? Definitely! Take a look, I even released my trigger and went completely depowered on this nice little wave. But the main problem is this board. First of all, it looks super cookie. I'm sure the whole lineup was laughing at me looking how I write on this silly orange board. Moreover, it's so wobbly and so unstable. It's like staying on the pool table made of the jelly. I have almost no control whatsoever. I would definitely not recommend anybody taking an inflatable board and go straight to the rigid one. 
The bottom line, our refoiling experiment went fine, but this is the first and the last time I'm ever going to use an inflatable board for refoiling. All right, let's go straight to the next experiment and try the rigid board. But before we get to the rigid board, I might need some extra accessories, which I just got in this new box and I'm going to show you. First of all, it's a mounting base plate, which we are going to attach in front of the board somewhere right here near my front leg. This will help us install the box in front of the board, which will prevent the water cutting the signal. We are going to attach the mounting base plate somewhere right here, same way as you attach the foot straps. Next, I got a lot of new cable guides, which we'll need to secure our cable. Next, we got the new folding propeller with metal props, which has improved performance and less drag. Then I got a spare remote. Trust me, guys, these things break a lot and they're quite cheap, so make sure you get a spare remote. You really don't want to be on a beautiful day, great swell coming and your remote is broken. Always get a spare remote. Next, I got a new port for our axis mast, which has variable width. This will help us install the motor. Next, we got the new V2 charger and the new improved V2 battery, which is improved mass-produced battery, but it's compatible with your old units as well. Finally, I got the new foil drive unit with a longer cable. I asked for the longest 2 meter cable, which will help us install this unit on our rigid board. Here we go. That's all we have for now. All I have to do is to install everything once again, and we are ready to hit the waves. Let's go. Here we go, this is my new rigid board foil drive setup. Here we have 4.1 48 liter F1 carbon board with a carbon axis wing and PNG 1010 wing. The whole setup, including the foil drive and the battery in the mast and the wing, is just 13.8 kilograms. I'm very excited, but I'm also very concerned as well. As I told you, I don't have any real foiling experience. And this board is a little bit too small for my heavy weight and skill level. I wish it had something like 60 or 80 liters to get started with the rigid board. But I have what I have, so wish me luck and here we go. All right, let's take a look how it goes. I still cannot believe how light the whole setup is. <laughs> I've been riding e poles for a couple of years now and they're very heavy, trust me guys, around 30 kilograms. This one, it's like a feather, it weighs almost nothing. <laughs> I'm showing you here my maiden voyage. This is the first time I ever used this setup. Like I said, I have no real foiling experience. I have no idea how to ride this wing. I've never been on this wing, on this board before. There are so many new variables. This is all new territory for me. So let's see how it goes. I wanted to show my first ride because I have a lot of concerns when it comes down to new products like this. I know if you have 25 years of foiling experience, it might be easy for you, but what about guys like me who have zero foiling experience? Can we really lift up on a small board like this? My point is to show you my struggles, so you see even the guy like me with no foiling experience can get started on a product like this. As you can see, I was actually surprised how easy it was for me to stand up on this board. And in just a minute I was already foiling. I even tried depowered riding by dropping my trigger and enjoying the zero drag foiling. Amazing feeling guys. I'm honestly blown away how easy it was. When I came out, my remote was dry. I didn't fall a single time. Wow guys, my maiden voyage went extremely well, it's unbelievable, I'm completely stoked. Despite such a small volume of the board and my heavy weight and lack of foiling experience, 
I had no trouble lifting up on my first try. The swell is really small today, but I still could catch a couple of waves and ride completely depowered. No drag, no noise, no heavy weight. Unbelievable experience. Really stoked. Let's keep practicing. On my next session I decided to push the limits really hard and went straight down to the 33 liter board to see if it's enough to lift a heavy rider like me. This is an F1 4.6 prone foiling 33 liter board and the rest of the setup is the same. I'm using PNG 1010 front wing. This time I went to the lake, to the flat water to do some pumping exercises. Let's see how it goes. Woo. As you can see, the board is so small, it's completely sinking when I'm on it. Despite that, I was surprised that I could still lift and get going. Amazing! Another thing that I noticed is that if you're struggling to lift up, you can hold the front of the board, just make sure the box with the antenna is out of the water. And then instead of trying to go in straight, try to hold the nose and try to go in circles. Somehow, if you're going in circles, the wing is generating a little bit more lift, which might be just enough of extra lift to help you stand up on the board. Also, if you're on a flat lake like me here, you're completely alone, get rid of your leash, it will reduce your drag. The best thing to do on the lake is to learn flat water pumping. Trust me, it's super fun, but quite difficult to do. You need to generate some speed and then you do some sort of an ollie. Try to get out of the water, so your motor is out of the water and then you do your pumping. Don't laugh at me at my chicken wings. This is the first time I'm actually doing a flat water pumping. I am always sharing with you all my first time experiences so you can see that the guy like me without any foiling experience can still do it, so can you. Let's try some pumping. Motor out. And we power. Yeah, perfect. Speaking of pumping, the proper way to do it is described by Dominic Hoskins, which is my big inspiration in foil drive. He's saying, when you're pumping, spring up rather than pushing down and concentrate on lifting up your knees directly after you spring up. Lifting your knees up helps you to unweigh your body weight from the board, which gives you much more glide. It also keeps you high on the mast, which makes it pumping easier. By the way, make sure to follow Dominic Hoskins on his YouTube. It's a really great source for you to learn anything about the fall drive, tips, tricks, and he's really pushing the limits. My biggest inspiration so far. And if you're riding in the ocean, in the choppy water, my biggest advice to you is do not fall. Like, do whatever you want, ride as hard as you want, just do not fall off the board. Because each time you're trying to lift up and launch the board in the choppy water, you will lose up to 15 or maybe 20% of the battery. That's a huge loss of battery life and this battery is so small, you really don't want to lose so much of the battery. And especially if you're under 40% left, you're not going to lift up at all. So make sure you do not fall. Now, if you're getting involved with fall drive, it gives you a lot of room for experiment. You can join Fall Drive Facebook group where the community is very friendly and they're showing their great ideas. For example, Cameron here is putting two motors on one board, probably double power. Very exciting. Another idea is shown here by David. It's not endorsed by Fall Drive, but take a look what he's doing. He's putting his box on the harness on his waist. Then he's attaching it with a leash. This way he can foil without any extra weight on the board itself. Riding the setup that is so lightweight has so many advantages, but I'll have to be honest with you, there are some disadvantages as well comparing to the heavy e-foil. First of all, due to the bigger battery, e-foil engine is much stronger and more powerful, which gives you much more speed and if you're riding on the flat water, you can do all those hard turns, hard carving, very fast riding up to 55 kilometers per hour. You can never achieve this kind of speed with the fall drive, which is quite slow, plus you have to use high spec ratio wings to compensate. Another disadvantage of the lightweight setup compared to the heavy e-fall can be felt during the strong offshore wind. 
you see efoil has so much extra weight in the board which combined with the fast speed gives you a lot of momentum when you release the power the board has a lot of inertia a lot of momentum getting into the wave so even if you have a very strong offshore wind which is blowing you away with efoil you can easily ride the wave depowered while with my lightweight setup that you see right here i am just blown away and i completely stall if there is a strong offshore wind that's why again it's very important to choose the right setup for the right conditions there is no ideal setup for the all sorts of conditions i know this video is getting quite long but i'm so excited to try everything i can so in this final experiment let's push the limits even further and try the smallest board i could ever find this is a brand new 2023 lift foil sprung foiling board 4.0 just 30 liters one of the smallest boards i could ever find the rest of the setup is the same i'm going to use png 1010 this board has almost no volume but like i always say you're not going to surf the board you're gonna surf the wing so the wing is what matters and to be honest i'm quite skeptical that i can lift on such a small wing that's why i brought another one today this is a new png 1310 wing it's so big and so long it's actually longer than the board itself take a look that's crazy <laughs> it provides you with so much lift and glide that i'm pretty sure with this wing we are gonna lift even on a board that is so small all right wish me luck and here we go again here goes nothing i will not lie this setup is just so small it's on the edge what's possible for a heavy rider like me as you can see i'm applying all the tricks i know so far just to get going i'm going in circles i'm even flapping my legs i'm doing everything i can to get me going just a little bit more speed i need some sort of a boost mode just like press for two three seconds and then you go here i just really struggle but still i could do it and once i'm up on the foil it's unbelievable it's a completely different story when you lose so much extra dead weight there is no extra swing weight and you just fly like a bird you pump it's unbelievable feeling much better than any big board trust me guys Then of course I decided to try the big 1310 PNG wing and this is completely different story. Yes, this one is much better to lift up. I have no trouble at all lifting up. But once I'm up in the air riding, I have zero control over it. That's unbelievable how bad it is compared to the previous wing. As you can see on the same day, my skills went to minus 100 just by changing the wing. I can barely stand up, not even talking about riding or pumping. This wing is just so big, it barely moves, it's extremely slow, it cannot turn and I have no control whatsoever. This is really funny to see on my wipeouts, but this just proves the point that it's extremely important to get the right setup for the right conditions. I could go on and on with my experiments. As you can see, I'm pretty excited about this product. And if you can look past through the do-it-yourself look of it, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love it as well. You can see fall drive really excites me, gets me going to try and experiment with different board setups, different wings, different board sizes to see how far I can push the limits in riding depowered on the waves. Will it be a killer of efoils? Definitely not. This product is not intended to be an efoil. And if you are just getting started in efoiling and looking for an easy to ride board which will give you up to 2 hours of riding time that will let you cruise around, definitely pick a different product. Foil drive is not an efoil, it's a completely different thing. Foil drive is for you if you are like me who already efoiled for a couple of seasons and who is looking forward to progress into real foiling but struggles with it. It's a bridge that will help you motorize your existing foil gear and help you experiment and progress further. And if you're looking to learn wing foiling or prone foiling, foil drive can help you as well. 
Also, from what I heard, the team behind Fall Drive keeps improving the product and next season they're gonna introduce a lot of cool features, so stay tuned. I'm sure with more experiments I'm gonna update my review next season to see how I progress and how Fall Drive helps me improve my foiling experience. That's all for today guys and actually with this video I'm closing my sixth season of Jet Surfing Nation. So I would like to thank everyone who stayed with me all these years. Thank you for all your support, all your comments and all your feedback. It really keeps me going. Let's keep riding together for years to come. Let's experiment, let's try more efoils, more jet boards and more cool toys on the water next season. That's all for now, have a great holiday season and a successful 2023. Take care, cheers, bye.